I want to uh, get your perspective uh, about like what the crypto industry looks like uh, from you, from your perspective, because I know you're like pretty exposed to it, but you're not in it. Uh, so like adjacent, but not inside. Uh, and so like uh, just from the, from the outside in, like what 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 are we to to you like you? Like what you, you look over the fence? Like we're trading meme coins. We're like trying to innovate. We're like Does struggling it look for like adoption. A giant scam. Yeah. What, do we look like a mess? <laughs> like are we legit? Like how how do you perceive us? I think on some level it's like refreshing to see people speaking more honestly about the meme coins because that's what everything was a few years ago anyway. And there was a lot of mm -hmm. lying about like, well, this meme coin is going to be essential to like. I don't know, agriculture in some really ambiguous way. And I was just like, is it? That seems like a fucking stretch and a half. <laughs> um, so it's like kind of nice to see people like, no, I'm just going to like launch a meme coin associated with Andrew Tate and call it daddy. And you're going to buy it because this beanie baby is really popular and, you know, cryptographically secure. Um, that is one thing. Like, I guess the, the sort of overt trashiness of it, I actually prefer. Uh, and then... Um, I think that there are a lot of people who very earnestly are looking to work on, you know, decentralized finance because they sort of believe in the mission. I think that's cool. Um, and they're still figuring out ways to do that. I think that Bitcoin has already proved its value. And I think that any kind of decentralized, cryptographically secure store of wealth is very valuable by itself. Like you don't even need to justify beyond that. So that's mm -hmm. cool. It's already awesome to me. Um, and then if any of these other interesting sort of hypotheticals play out, that could be great too. I think that the like sort of decentralized contracts are interesting. And I think that uh, every time I talk about this problem of vanishing information online, people say crypto solves this. I have not seen that solution. I am interested in that solution. If you can actually create some kind of solution there to this idea of like, you know, literally information just vanishing or being manipulated, disturbed. We, like we, removed we from a, the internet, you mean? We need a permanent record. And right. it is this huge flaw in the, the a life lived online. We've abandoned the analog, right? The last Encyclopedia Britannica was published in 2010, the physical Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, people are not buying magazines anymore or newspapers. I'm not a fetishist for paper. I don't really care about it in that way, mm -hmm. but they were physical. There was right. 20 years ago, if you told me that a mid-century issue of Time magazine would be more durable than a blog from 2004, which no longer exists, I would have been like, that's crazy. There's no way. The information online is immortal. It's never going to go anywhere. But that's not true. It's vanishing all the time. MTV News just pulled their entire archive for the last two decades. Uh, you saw the entire Gawker universe snuffed out, like the toast and like weird blogs like that that really matter to millennials. Wait, really? So ago. like no one's archiving this stuff? Like the Wayback Machine? You have the Wayback Machine thing? doing pieces of it. It's super clunky. It's really hard to search. And you what it effectively does is it like it cuts you off from your past. So yeah, there are versions of this and it's just not enough. It's like this stuff needs to be alive and at your fingertips and like really easy to sort through and it's not at all. Um, so yeah, maybe th there's a, a solution there. So I guess, what do I see? I see some like scammy gamblers, which whatever, they're saying they're that now. So I like that better. Um, <laughs> I see- A um, lot of scammy gamblers. I see a handful of people working on things that I think could be really cool. And I think that's really nice. And then I, you still see a bunch of people sort of being dishonest, like looking for a solution to mm -hmm. a problem that doesn't exist and pretending they're working on something that doesn't really- actually matter and all they really want to do is launch a coin and make some money and those are my least favorite of all the groups sure yeah agreed uh what what, what are your touch points with crypto like when when crypto like comes across your timelines or your feeds or whatever is it just through twitter or like where do you actually like view the industry twitter and then th through like friends of mine who are super and colleagues who are like super into it yeah and just like kind of like shows up in chat rooms just because somebody somebody's interested in it and throws your way like crypto news and stuff, like developments yeah. and weird things that people are working on. But yeah, it's, okay. that's kind of the right. extent of it. But yeah, Twitter, like it does feel like a slightly different world though to my world. Like I'm definitely yeah. right next to it and there's always overlap, but it wasn't until the Trump coin chaos that I was like, whoa, I am suddenly like, they're here. They're at my doorstep. <laughs> and it's like a whole other thing. To continue leveling up your crypto game, then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and is completely free. Just click below to sign up.